Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful day. I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing right now with my golf swing and uh, just how I'm warming up and uh, what's going on with my swing evolution. It continues. I bet you that for every golfer in the world, you know, they're always going through some sort of an evolution. So at any rate, I'm out here just warming up, hitting a, a few balls before I go out to play skins with the guys. And this is one of the only times that I get to really play golf. Um, you know, it, it takes an entire day to play 18 holes. And I'm, I'm happily, I've got a lot of golf students and a lot of golf business. So to be able to sneak out for about two and a half hours and play skins is a lot of fun. Now, um, these first few balls are not feeling so solid. I hit a couple uh, little like half wedges or like quarter wedges uh, and then got to this uh, this uh, wedge right here and I feel like my arms are going a little bit. I'm, I'm wanting to use my arms too much and I've been very very interested in uh, my turn. So I take a peek around, see if anybody's looking. There's nobody there. I pull off my belt because I don't want to feel like some type of weirdo but uh, this belt is, uh, is really doing wonders for me. This is a, a big part of uh, my work right now. Um, your work needs to be specific, okay? If you're just doing random stuff all the time, it's not gonna get you to where you wanna be. Immediately, I have much better rotation. I take my arms out of the swing and I hit the ball with my body. My instinct is always going to be to use my arms and shoulders. I mean, that's that's what I did for decades. But just by putting this belt on all of a sudden, you know, I'm reminded of how I need to continue to rotate, use my body. So again, I don't have a lot of time, so I, I go out to uh, grab my hybrid and just hit a couple more shots that are connected. Yeah, a little thin, you know, but uh, that's all right. The thing that this really does for me is it makes the ball go straight. That's all I have to tell you. It's like my hands and arms, when they get excited, that's when my body gets out of sync. And then when my body gets out of sync, that's when I have that big push to the right that happens sometimes or the big snap hook. But uh, so far these shots are all pretty good. Now, while I've been doing this one plane elbow connected swing, uh, I'm holding the grip a little bit stronger. You know, a lot of the stuff reminds me a little bit of uh, what I learned, learned with Todd Graves about the Mo Norman swing. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like I'm giving up a little bit of distance right now. And uh, I can make a bigger circle if I reach my arms off of my body. But those days when the timing doesn't feel good, it's just, who knows what's going to happen, you know? But here I am, I'm trying to, you know, just get a handle on this a little bit better. So that's not a bad hit. I mean, even with the arm super connected, I can still hit it probably 280 and, and with a lot less worry. All right, so this is the first tee. This is my buddy, Zach. You guys are all familiar with Zach. Uh, he is a, a fantastic golfer. I hope that uh, he makes it to the pros one day. a little bit out to the right but he'll have a little wedge in must be nice to hit at 350 now Joey's a great competitive golfer as well he pushes that one out to the right a little bit still the first tee just getting loose so here I'm going to try and do my connected arm swing Turned out to be a nice little baby draw right down the middle. So that's my <laughs> that's my buddy Nick. 
He's so good. It's just incredible. He has the simplest swing, and he does. He has the most uh, similar swing to what I'm trying to actually do right now. But this is my friend John Ruiz. Now I want to tell you guys a little bit about John Ruiz after he hits this. Very interesting. Okay, John Ruiz can flat out play. So as I was saying, John Ruiz can flat out play. So let me tell you, his low round on 18 holes is 62, okay? He doesn't count that because he says it was an easy course, but he shot 64 at Brookside. That is very, very difficult. So John Ruiz is just one of these amazing natural golfers. Um, he grew up playing sports, real athletic. He's about my age. He played baseball. But check out this swing. I want to take a look at this real quick. There's some interesting stuff that we can all learn from. I consider his swing to be a classic swing. You'll notice he picks the left heel up. He gets a lot of leverage. but I want to talk about this takeaway. It reminds me a little bit about Lee Trevino. Now, when you're in this position ready to take the club back, it's really easy to stick the club in the ground. So you've got a couple different choices of what you can do. You can lift, you can push it out the way John does, which is kind of like what Lee Trevino does, or you can break the wrists and caddy drag it to the inside. But it's kind of a funky thing taking a, a driver back especially because you've got a little bit more club because your left shoulder is closer to the ball now than it's going to be when you make impact. So you basically have extra club. And this is what Mo Norman and those guys, they basically tried to eliminate that. I'm kind of trying to eliminate that too. But what John does here that's interesting is he actually lifts his arms in front of his body. This is an exercise you actually see a lot of pros do. And I heard that Ben Hogan had had students doing this back in the day when he wasn't even a good, a good uh, tour player. So John lifts the club up. Now, what is this doing? It's creating space for him to take the club back. It's going to help him wind up. And most specifically, you've heard me talk about this, he's going to take the slack out of his arms and shoulders as he makes his way to the top. Pretty classic set. He lifts the left heel. He's got a full turn. And John hits it over 300 yards all the time. But wait till you see this move. Arms are in front of the body. Club looks a little bit steep, but just for a fraction of a second. He clears, gets under and behind. And now, look at where he's delivering this golf club from. He just, he doesn't really miss the ball very much. He's such a good ball striker. And he's got really great touch with his putter. If you can do those two things, you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, so he rips it out there. Now, I only filmed a, a few holes, like a few swings out here. This is my buddy, Mike. I love Mike. He is so cool. Fun to play with. He's 61. My God. I feel like I'm uh, 25 when I'm hanging out with Mike. Yeah, so I pulled that one to the left. That wasn't my best swing, but again, I'm really trying to get a feel for this. but it is a work in progress. Overall, I, I hit the ball fantastically well off the tee. There's Ruiz ripping it out there. Now, John said that he'll be on my channel. He wants to uh, do an episode with me. So I look, look forward to sharing his game with you. He's incredible. So here I'm on the last tee. Hit some great shots today. Haven't won any money yet. But that's, that's what I want out of my swing right now. So I wanted to take a, a quick look at this swing. It was one of my uh, better driver swings this day. So let's watch it full speed one time. 
It's a nice smooth hit right down the middle. So what I'm trying to feel right now is a connection under this right arm. And I'm going to try and really hold that for as long as I can through the swing. Here we can see it's really connected as I just kind of turn in a barrel, so to speak. My swing's looking a little bit flatter here too. I, I have a, de a definition where I say if that right arm stays connected and it's the right forearm that the one plane swingers like the Mo Norman guys measure and look off of. If that right elbow doesn't come up off the body, you're essentially a one planer. I've talked about Doug Sanders and Charlie Sifford being guys who are truly one planers. It's pretty incredible. But as we can see here, let's take a look at this. So this is what I consider to be a one plane swing. Right elbow stays connected, stays pretty much on plane. Now, if I can keep my right heel down and don't let my head get ahead of the ball, like I keep it in the same spot that it was when I aimed it, then I should be able to hit the ball pretty square. And that's, that's what I'm able to do here. So let's look at this right heel. I wanna see my footwork. Man, I'm not really getting as deep as I want to in that right leg. I'm not lifting that left heel. That could be a little bit of trouble. And I think that's why I back off the ball just a touch because my head gets a little bit close. But those feet are firmly planted. You see me back off there? That's, that is exactly because uh, there's always something to work on. Yeah, I'm not getting deep enough into that right hip, but I'm coordinated enough to pull this off. And because my feet are staying planted, I'm just rolling the ankles. I'm able to get away with a pretty decent drive here. I hit a beautiful three wood up to the green and I missed my little birdie putt. Oh my God. So at any rate, that was my day. I just wanna be able to hit the ball straight and give myself more opportunities to score. I'm doing that with body connection. The belt drill is helping me. I hope this helps you. I hope you have a great day. Hit them long and hit them straight. Hey guys, so let's cut to the chase. Here's my old golf swing. And here's my new golf swing. Five years ago, I started a YouTube channel and I wanted to improve my golf swing by using Ben Hogan's five lessons. Well, guess what? It worked. And along the way, I picked up over 8 million views on YouTube and I learned how to shoot under par. Unbelievable, right? Well, the great news is I have a brand new instructional video called The Hogan Code. In this video, I break down everything that I learned over my long journey to learn to swing like Ben Hogan. And now you can learn the very same techniques that I used to become the golfer I always wanted to be.